Intel or AMD, which should you choose? I get this question a lot and it always calls for some heated debate in some forum or live stream or Twitter feed, but it really shouldn't have to. There are objective facts dividing the two sides and each consumer is free to navigate between them according to the utility each may provide in any given scenario. No two people are alike. And what I mean simply by that is this, some may see more value from Intel and others may see more value from AMD. So which should you choose? I'll try to narrow down the competition in this video to make your decision just a bit easier. One thing I want to make perfectly clear before I discuss anything else is that I am not being paid by anyone to make this video. I'm not even throwing a sponsor in this video because I don't want anything like that swaying what I'm going to say here. This is straight from the heart and my experience over the years. For once, we have healthy competition in the consumer CPU space and I finally feel comfortable enough to give you guys the inside scoop. So you don't have to agree with what I'm going to say but I'm going to say it anyway. So the first two questions you should ask yourself when deciding between platforms is what you'll be doing more of. Think long and hard about these two, gaming or creating, and what your budget is. I've said this time and time again, but if you want to purely game and that is it, you should forego a Core i7 from Intel, purchase an unlocked i5, still one of the best CPUs out there for gaming, throw the save money into a better graphics card and a better cooler, period. That's my recommendation, but not all are cut and dry like this. The i5-8600K, as I've proven in this video right here, keeps up with the i7 counterpart in nearly every title in 1080p. The higher the resolution, remember, the less stress you'll put on it. But fewer and fewer people are doing just gaming anymore. Many are multitasking, streaming, content creating, and this is where AMD Ryzen comes in. Without a doubt, the red team hosts better value. That's just, I think we can all agree on that. The Ryzen 5 1600 is, in my opinion, the best value chip on the market. And while not the greatest for gaming, will still keep frame rates in desirable levels even when paired with something like a 1080 Ti. Your CPU might be the bottleneck in some cases, but don't worry, you'll be just fine. So let's break this down by price category. If you are only looking to spend roughly 500 US equivalent dollars on a rig, you should stay in Ryzen 3 territory. I wouldn't even recommend Intel for, for this budget just because we only have Z370 chipsets at our disposal right now. So with all Ryzen CPUs, you can overclock healthily on both B350 and X370 motherboards. I recommend B350 for up to Ryzen 5 and X370 for Ryzen 7 and Ryzen plus processors for the extra overclocking headroom you might need later on. With that said though, one thing you should know is that choosing Ryzen means that you'll have a difficult time overclocking past roughly 4 gigahertz. A feature in which Intel reigns supreme is overclockability, though much of this can be attributed to the fact that we've been refining the exact same process for several years now. You won't need a beefy air cooler with any Ryzen 3 CPU, and I wouldn't spend any more than about 100 bucks or so on an 1800X cooler unless you're going for something as ostentatious is custom water cooling, in which case all bets are off. For unlocked Intel SKUs, however, you may want to consider something like the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 on the air cooling side, or a 360mm AIO like the new Corsair H150i Pro. If your budget is closer to 1000 USD equivalent, then you likely have two CPUs from which to choose, the R5 1600 and the i5 8600K. Both are extremely capable, but for different reasons. The i5 will be the better gamer, you'll see anywhere between a 5 and 15% frame rate bump in most most titles in 1080p, but the R5 will cost less, especially when the price of a B350 motherboard is taken into account. And despite having the same number of active cores, the R5 1600 boasts simultaneous multi-threading, or SMT, which is essentially AMD's hyper-threading equivalent. These extra virtual threads reduce bulk processing and efficiencies associated with data streamlined through individual pipelines. More on that right here. But what you need to know in this video is that the i5 will still squeak out victories in most tasks, including content creation, thanks to higher frequencies and better software optimization. You may get lucky on the RAM side as well, which could influence a few tasks. As for the top tier stuff, this really comes down to preference. I used Ryzen 7 in my daily driver for several months thanks to the 8 core 16 thread offerings. And it was superior in every way to my i7-6700K safe gaming, but that wasn't as big of a concern for me. With the release of the 8700K though, things have been shaken up a bit. I now switch periodically between both platforms for gaming and editing and have to say that both perform very well. Many of the kinks have been worked out from the initial Ryzen launch, including RAM compatibility and 
IO stability, so you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between an R7 and i7 machine. In short, if you want great value and performance for everything literally, go to Ryzen 7. But if you want the absolute best at the expense of maybe fewer cores, which may impact things like streaming several years from now, people argue, you know, the future proofing thing, then go with the core i7. Oh, and one last thing, try to avoid Ryzen 1 CPUs ending in X. They're marketed as better overclockers, but since you can do this with literally any of them from R3 up through R7, it makes no sense in my book to spend more money on chips that won't overclock much higher than their non-X counterparts unless you plan on doing no manual overclocking. And while the R5 1600X has a higher TDP and out of the box boost frequency, you should know that this is only for a single thread, similar to Turbo Boost. You shouldn't have much trouble reaching similar frequencies anyway with a cheaper 1600 non-X SKU, assuming you have a beefy enough cooler and solid motherboard. With Intel though, things are a bit monotone. If you're looking to completely upgrade platforms, Coffee Lake is in my opinion the only viable option out there. Otherwise, Ryzen's value reigns supreme. So you have no choice with the blue team but to invest in the Z370 chipset, at which point it only makes sense to buy unlocked CPUs, namely the i5-8600K and the i7-8700K, which is why I've only mentioned those two from Intel in this video. With that, I hope this video at least clears up a bit of your predicament. It's going to be a difficult decision no matter what, especially if you want to game and multitask, you know, do something else in the background. You can find all these CPUs, by the way, linked in the video description, along with motherboards I'd recommend for them, and they're tied to my Amazon and Newegg affiliates, so I do get a small kickback or punchback if uh, you decide to purchase something through them. With YouTube's algorithm hitting medium and smaller channels pretty hard lately, it all adds up and I appreciate your support, even if all you do is view this video. If you like this one, by the way, be sure to give this one a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Thumbs down for the opposite. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already and stay tuned for more content like this. Also, a pretty uh, cheap PC build, which many of you should be interested in. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.